the seventh grade Mount Abraham Union Middle School students enrolled in Jocelyn Foreign Science class, learning goes far beyond the walls of their Bristol, Vermont classroom. Witchity, 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 yes! Oh, nice, nice. You do, awesome! I've given kids the challenge of creating digital field guides that will help members of our community monitor the health of six different ecosystems at the Watershed Center. The center is a piece of preserved land near our school. So we are right here, right now. With the help of other instructors, students equipped with iPads and field guides photographed and identified the different plants and creatures encountered during their visit. Our species data is being added to a project that we created called the Watershed Center Biodiversity Project, which can be used by our community to monitor biodiversity and health of those ecosystems as well as figure out if there are invasives there. But it also is being added to the Vermont Atlas of Life, which is a project that scientists in our state are using to get baseline data about what species are present in Vermont. The class focused on three forested type ecosystems, as well as a pond, marsh, and vernal pool ecosystem. A vernal pool is like a small deep depression in the earth in a forest um, that fills up with water that has no exit streams or entrance streams and it's kind of like runoff water or rainwater and it just gathers up in that one spot and we're learning about the ecosystem in itself and like what animals live there and how they interact with the surroundings. Vernal pools usually dry up during the summer that makes the fish not live here because the fish will die out when the pool dries, so they can't reproduce, but salamanders and frogs can. You got a beaver. The biggest difference between being in the classroom and being outside in the ecosystems is that it's real. So for kids, it's just a lot more exciting to be out in the field, and instead of me giving them a tree branch on their desk, they're actually out there looking at the real tree or the real salamander or the real fish and trying to figure out what it is. So that's pretty exciting for them. This is the red eft, and it is the juvenile stage of an eastern salamander. And uh, the adults live in vernal pools mostly because there's a very low fish count because vernal pools go away and so they're very unreliable for fish to like breed in. And so, yeah, that's why salamanders can easily get by in vernal pools. Let's line the iPads up. Let's put them on the table and see if we agree on the locations. Back in the classroom, the students upload all their findings from their iPad to a website called iNaturalist.org. This website allows citizen scientists to record what they see in nature and share it with scientists and other nature lovers. The website allows for individual observations, as well as citizen science projects designed to keep tabs on a specific location. Citizen science is really important for middle school students because it allows them to contribute to the community. It makes their learning more relevant and they're more engaged in it. So we are creating an individual project for the Watershed Center called Watershed Center Biodiversity Project that has the geographical limits of the watershed center so when people make observations there they can add it and it can become a trove of data that we could use in some way in our community to monitor the health of the ecosystem. The Watershed Center Diversity Project also includes the six guides created by students to help visitors identify different species in the area. Oh yeah that's the um, that's an adult that's an adult. We've seen a spotted salamander but didn't catch it. We've seen the eastern newt and a red-backed salamander and a couple of frogs, a bunch of bugs, and uh, we found a couple of larvae and tadpoles. Through this hands-on approach to teaching, the students get much more than just a grade for working on this project along with the satisfaction of creating a resource for community members to use for years to come, the students have also gained an understanding of various ecosystems that will hopefully stay with them for a lifetime. In this unit, I've learned a lot about what kind of 
animals I would find in the marsh. I've learned a little bit about other habitats and we do a lot more hands-on projects and it's my favorite class. Yeah. <laughs> I caught some caddisflies and another cool snail if anyone wants to try to identify those. See these little, these things here? There's actually larvae. They build their house out of sticks and stones and things. And then they're inside of there. Cool. I really want to connect students to the land where they live. I get really excited when I hear kids say, whoa. I've seen one of these mud puddles behind my house in the woods and I didn't know that that was a vernal pool or there was anything special about it or whoa I've been riding my four-wheeler through these and I guess I shouldn't do that anymore so that kids actually understand a little bit more about their own backyards. So that's pretty exciting to me and just getting kids so they have a sense of attachment to these ecosystems so that down the road when it comes to making decisions in their community about how we're going to use land, that they keep that in mind, that they know why vernal pools are important, or even if they become a parent and they have kids and they want to have their kids to have that same experience, that they'll have that connection and they'll be interested in helping to make wise decisions about how we use land.